hazard disaster hazard means hmm. hazard means any situation any situation that is a threat to threat that means it may occur may not occur it's a threat to not only life life property environment anything okay every hazard cannot be a disaster see disaster means there should be a loss of life or a property or environment something the loss should be there only then you call disaster for example a hazard in uh, antarctica or a hazard in thar desert thar desert let us say there is no life in thar desert at that point of time a hazard occurred hazard a big earthquake occurred in thar desert a major earthquake but there is no loss to any life no loss to any property then it is not a disaster you understand for example vijayawada a minor earthquake occurred but all the buildings on bandar road fell down so it's a loss to property huge property and many lives many lives so their hazard may be small but disaster is huge see hazard is only a threat a possible threat to the life property environment disaster is actual loss of life property or environment there is actual difference you understand so every hazard cannot be a disaster and hazard will convert into disaster depending upon where it has occurred where it has occurred okay now see generally nobody will ask you classify disaster what are the different hazards generally they will not ask you okay but if you know a broad classification you will be able to answer them in questions which are atmospheric based disasters land based disasters and you know, questions are like that you can answer that's all otherwise they will not ask you directly types of disasters nobody will ask you okay generally disaster or hazard we can classify them based on based on the region where they are occurring whether they are atmosphere or occurring on the land or occurring in water occurred by water through water you understand based on the source for example hydrological hydrological hazards or disasters hydrological means water related tell me water related hazards very good volcano some water will come but it's not water based okay who said volcano you told no i understand that see if volcano occurs in the sea even then it is not called hydrological hydrological generally because volcano is based on the land volcano means from inside the earth magma will come out it has nothing to do with water of course of course if this is earth from inside the earth magma is coming out through a vent we call it as volcano and it may it may be caused by the pressure created by the water vapor inside the earth even then you do not call it as hydrological drought volcano is a geological uh, hydrological disaster sorry you call it as geological disaster i'll come to it geological disaster geological disaster means or is hazard means land based example earthquake volcano then land slide like that see hydrological cyclone tsunami then anything else Flood. very good floods anything else drought storm surge also storm surge also you can call it as uh, hydrological storm surge means during the storm sea rise high and water water floods into the land see flood can occur along the rivers or flood can occur along the coast also sea flooding okay then maybe atmospheric hazards means which occur in atmosphere see wherever it occurs it will affect the entire land it is affected but the source of occurring region of occurring atmospheric tell me atmospheric acid rains uh okay acid rains then then cyclone cyclone you can say here here also you can cyclone okay cyclone is basically atmospheric phenomenon cyclone okay what is it 
ఫెమైన్ ఓకే ఫెమైన్ రౌడ్ హైడ్రాలజీ క్లాస్ హైడ్రాలజికల్ బట్ మేబీ ఇట్స్ బికాస్ ఆఫ్ ఎల్ నీనో లా నీనో ప్రాబ్లం ఇన్ ద విన్ ప్యాటర్న్ సో యూ కెన్ కాల్ ఇట్ హోటల్స్ ఎస్ టార్నడోస్ టార్నడోస్ దెన్ హిల్ స్టోన్స్ యూనో హిల్ స్టామ్ హిల్ స్టామ్ ఇన్ తెలుగు వాల్ టు కాల్ ఇట్ హెస్ హిల్ స్టామ్స్ కోల్డ్ వేవ్స్ ఎస్ స్మాగ్ ఇస్ ఆల్సో ఏ డిజాస్టర్ స్మాగ్ కోల్డ్ వేవ్స్ హీట్ వేవ్స్ హీట్ వేవ్స్ ఇన్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ ఇన్ ఢిల్లీ లూ హీట్ వేవ్స్ కోల్డ్ వేవ్స్ మీన్స్ చునూ ఫోయన్ కోల్డ్ వేవ్స్ ఓకే so i told you know from siberia cold waves actually come towards india but himalayas stop them if there are no himalayas the cold waves from siberia will attack the entire north india it will affect all of us means in north india okay atmosphere based similarly similarly for example see biological biological based disasters biological means on the life virus virus attack of virus any epidemic spread of diseases see for example plague plague in 16th century i think plague has uh, eliminated almost half of the european population plague okay it's an epidemic disaster it's biological see not only this generally you can classify disasters into into natural disasters like how one of the students told you told me no natural not the other thing is man made is called anthropogenic anthropogenic means man made only man made but some disasters are combination of both man and nature we call them as socio natural socio natural natural means natural socio means man made socio natural okay now see generally earthquake is general natural of course earthquakes may be induced by man also but most natural volcanoes also natural volcanoes difficult that somebody goes into the earth and pushes up the magma general not possible volcano natural okay anthropogenic means for example see there are disasters like explosives industrial accidents chemical accidents for example industrial accidents chemical accidents nuclear accidents radiation see nuclear accidents means generally whenever you are talking about any disaster in the exam you have to mention some example of disaster for example when you talk about the earthquake earthquake you have to mention about 2001 buz earthquake buz where is buz which state gujarat buz earthquake 2001 you have to mention that one 2001 buz earthquake means you have to mention the fact something some example real example you cannot write answer dryly just like that okay for example when you talk about chemical accidents or industrial accidents in india chemical industrial accidents very good 1984 1984 bhopal gas tragedy do you know what is bhopal gas tragedy anybody bhopal gas tragedy dakkad where in bhopal and you know which company is that the company is i think it is union carbide of india private limited not a government private company means the ceo or some director was anderson there was a, there are cases on him anderson at the time rajiv gandhi was there rajiv gandhi was the prime minister but anderson somehow escaped india after the accident he left india easily generally he should be brought to justice but means he should be punished but he left india at the time see actually the company was in bhopal union carbide of india private limited is a company it is a pesticide manufacturing company they manufacture pesticides as they manufacture pesticide they send all the waste into one one uh, chamber once the chamber is about to be full about to be full they have evacuated the chamber but they have overfilled the chamber more than what it can take so after some time it exploded many gases came out of explosion but the major gas is mic methyl isocyanide methyl isocyanide is a major gas of course it's not the only gas methyl isocyanide is a major gas that leaked not only into atmosphere but also into groundwater it went in the groundwater soil atmosphere everywhere 
as it went into ground water for next 20 years also people who drink the water around that area or people who, who take the crops from the soil they're affected for some 10 to 20 years after the accident 10 years after the accident still people around that area are have got uh, neurological disorders babies who are born young babies you know they have some uh, physical disorders genetic disorders so it's a major case in fact bobal gas tragedy it really explains how industrial loss if not fought properly can have detrimental effects for a long time though the accident occurred in 84 the effects were there till 2014 you understand even the hiroshima and nagasaki also effects are there almost for 10 20 years effects so like that i give mention example for example nuclear accidents you can mention chernobyl incident chernobyl or you know three mile island three mile island incident or fukushima in japan fukushima three mile island in uh, very three mile island which ocean and then very chernobyl chernobyl actually at that time ussr now it is near ukraine now ukraine at that time it is ussr ukraine is a part of ussr now a separate country so you had to mention the some accidents some examples for example you ask about tsunami you had mentioned about 2004 tsunami the better india when you talk about talk about uh, flood you mentioned 2013 uttarakhand floods or 2016 kerala floods major floods in the recent past you had to mention those names if they ask you about famine if they ask you about famine maybe see actually after independence we do not have famines we have drought because after independence if there is a water problem government is able to supply water through canals rivers or tankers whatever okay if we have food problem agriculture there is no productivity government is able to fci food corporation is able to dump the buffer food at least to most of the people that's why famines were not there nowadays but before independence particularly during the colonial period when british ruled india famines are greatest famines india has seen some of the greatest famines 1877 south indian great famine of south india enter south india madras okay all this is south india at the time people used to eat what rats, rats. they used to because there's no food no whatever you find you have to eat you cannot say that i want to eat only hen or goat rat also you have to do sometimes okay so great famine similarly for example uh, or like that i'll mention cyclone cyclone you can mention for example what is actually 1999 super cyclone Orissa, super cyclone, Orissa. Okay. Recently also, Titli cyclone, Titli, 2018, last year only. 1999 super cyclone, Orissa, 2018 October, I think. 2018 October, Titli cyclone. Actually, regarding that Titli cyclone, rhymes. You know what is rhymes? You know what is rhymes? Rhymes means regional integrated multi hazard early warning system of africa and asia regional regional integrated integrated multi hazard multi hazard early warning early warning system of africa and asia see early warning system is what early warning means Whenever there is a cyclone going to come, flood going to occur, or earthquake going to occur, there should be some system, some technology, which will identify the disaster before. Means they have to see uh, in the sea, in the sea, in the Bay of Bengal, a cyclone has generated. It is coming towards Chennai coast. It will come in another three days. So be prepared. This is called early war system. Or see, the rainfall is heavy in Kerala. In next three days, all the rivers of Kerala will flood. So major floods are going to occur. Early warning system. So early warning system is the most important part in the disaster management. To manage, what is just management? Disaster management means what? In your broad term, disaster management means getting prepared for disaster or prevention of some disasters if possible or mitigating, reducing the effect of disaster. Disaster will occur, for example, take earthquake. See, earthquakes do not kill people. Bad structures do. What do I mean? See, earthquake means vibration of the earth. The, the P waves, S waves generated from inside the earth will come and hit the surface of the earth. Surface will vibrate. 
Just I am standing on the land. That's the building. Nothing happened to me. I am safe only now. What is the problem? But if I am staying on the building, something happened to me. Understand? So earthquakes do not kill people. Bad structures do. Okay? That is why mitigating, among the mitigation, if you construct these structures, buildings, which can resist the earthquakes. Resist. Earthquake has, building has to move like this. Stop. Stop. It's not fall down. Building should be like that. Such kind of buildings. Are you civil engineer? Civil engineer, right? You are civil engineer. Ah, I will come to that. I will ask some questions. Sir. Tell me. Okay? Now, see. Hey, by the way, I know some civil engineering. So, you cannot tell me something. Okay? <laughs> now, so in Japan, particularly in Japan, Indonesia, they take a lot of measures while building the uh, building the in, in infrastructure in such a way it can resist up to earthquake up to six on the Richter scale up to six it can resist okay so that is called mitigation mitigation you cannot uh, you cannot stop the earthquake but you can reduce the effects of the earthquake this is also disaster management anyhow disaster management is a broad term I will come to disaster management in another 10 minutes okay now see this one rhymes is early warning system it will warn you that a cyclone is coming flood is going to come earthquake like that multi hazard it, it, it will not warn only about cyclone cyclone flood drought multi hazard generally most of the early warning systems will indicate only about one hazard but this one rhymes is multi hazard early warning system for both africa and asia africa and asia okay regarding titli regarding titli do you know what rhymes told rhymes report said that titli is a very different type of cyclone which never occurred in orissa before orissa do you know the strange feature of titli is that titli has recurred after landfall by the way landfall means see if this is earth cyclone always originates on cyclone means tropical cyclone all originates in sea all originating sea it will be pushed towards the land by the planetary winds the winds the winds in this case northeast trade winds okay the cyclone will be pushed towards the land cyclone means what see cyclone means the cyclone cyclone means the rotation of wind around a low pressure area this low pressure area wind is moving that is cyclone that originates on originates in sea it is pushed towards land when it comes to the land see it's coming to the land when it comes onto the land it is called landfall Landfall means cyclone coming onto the land from the sea is called landfall. Generally, after the landfall, it will not go like this and like this. After landfall, it will be here only for some time, or it will die. It will die because in the ocean, cyclone has energy from evaporation. Ocean has in the ocean evaporation is more no. Evaporation supplies a lot of energy to cyclone. Once it comes onto the land, on the land where is evaporation? Where is water on the land? So no energy. It will die within two or three days. Okay, so but Titli is strange. Titli after coming onto the land, then it recurred. See what they have done, the government agencies. They understood that Titli is going to fall here, so they have taken all the pre preparedness management here. Cyclone, nothing should happen. But after coming here, it went there. They do not know. They do not know it's going to happen. So it's very strange, very, diff very different. Generally, this property of moving away is called recurving. Recurve. Recurving is very common thing. See, recurving is common thing, but recurving will occur in the ocean only. For example, while coming, it will be instead of Orissa, it will fall in West Bengal. That recurving is possible. After coming on to the land, recurving is different. That is a different strange thing of Titli. For example, you know Ashoba. Have you heard of cyclone Ashoba? Ashoba cyclone. People thought that it will come to Gujarat. See, it came, came, came. People in Gujarat are ready. They are ready prepared for cyclone. Came. After coming here, it went like this. What is the country here? What is the country there? Very good. Yemen. It went on to Yemen. Yemen people are looking for Gujarat. What happened to Gujarat like that? Something happened to them. That is called recurving. Okay, that is recurving in the ocean, particularly recurring on the land. Anyhow, what I'm saying is, we have to keep a note of all the major disasters that are happening in India or in the world. You have to make a note. In disaster answers, you have to use them. You cannot write only the theory. You have to give examples of disasters. Okay. 
then epidemic any epidemic you know bird flu swine flu h1n1 virus that occurred recently epidemic ebola ebola is a major epidemic in the african countries ebola zika virus in the latin american countries zika virus okay so this kind of the epidemics they spread very fast they kill more people okay anyhow so if if anyhow i am talking about these things you know so anthropogenic disasters means industrial accidents chemical accidents what happened Uh, is, nuclear radiation, even the train accident, bus accident, flight accident, any accident is a part of disaster. Even terrorist attacks, terrorist attacks. Tell me example, which occurred in India. In India, tell me an example of terrorist attack which happened recently. You can write about 2008 Mumbai attack, 26 by 11, 26 by 11 Mumbai attack. What what is it? In India, there is a attack. Palma, Palma, Palma attack. Correct. Then Patan Kot attack. Patan Kot attack. People did not die actually. They came into the air base. They attacked the soil. But Mumbai attack. Many people died. Mumbai attack. Okay. Mumbai attack as a. They came into the city. Main hotels. Simple took the guns. To the like that. Okay. What is that? Yes, Google Air Blast is a. A major accident, Google chat blast. Parvati attack was nothing happened to anybody, but it's a major attack. Yes, it's a major attack. Actually, few people want to enter the parliament. Luckily, they are stopped. If they are allowed, if they are allowed into parliament, they might have blasted enter parliament easily. Have seen the movie V for Vendetta? V for Vendetta movie. In that movie, V V is the hero. He actually blasts the enter parliament of UK. You know why he will blast? he want to change the system of uk system want to change the best way to change system is to attack the parliament yeah. anyhow now see socio natural causes socio natural causes means both the, there is effect by man as well as nature both example floods see floods occur both because of nature whenever there is a huge rainfall floods will occur whenever there is a cloud burst floods will occur Tell me example of man-made floods. Dam burst. When a dam breaks, man-made floods. When dam breaks, all the water will flow. No, man-made attack. Man-made flood. Then urban floods. Urban floods means human beings. What they are doing in Hyderabad? All the wetlands are closed, encroached, occupied. When there is rainfall, rainwater has no place to flow. What it will do? It will stay there only. This is called flood. Urban floods. Even the small rainfall also, little rain also, it cannot go anywhere. All drains are blocked, wetlands are encroached, no place to go. When there is no place to go, what will the water do? Stay there only. Let us this much water fill stays there only. After some time, we see what I see: Mumbai, Chennai, Hyderabad. Urban floods are man-made floods. They are not natural floods. Naturally, in Hyderabad, if Hyderabad is not there. I mean, in the place of Hyderabad, if Hyderabad is not there, some other village is there. Floods do not occur because of city. Because of filling the city with concrete, tar, buildings, filling the wetlands, all drainage, blocking all drainage, do that floods are occurring. Man-made floods. Okay, drought also drought. Drought also man-made only drought. See, drought means what? Non-availability of water. Though there is rainfall, if human beings are using more water than required, for example, Rajasthan is there. Rajasthan for the Rajasthan soil, you have to do, you have to grow millets generally, not the rice. But if you use rice, you are using more water than required, right? You are exploiting all the water. Then after few years, water will not be there. Even Gurgaon, Gurgaon, Gurgaon means near Delhi, Haryana, Gurgaon, Gurugram, Gurugram because of over construction, they are using all the ground water for construction. For construction, we use water, no? Why? Yes, we use it. So, for because of so many constructions in Gurugram, they are using all the ground water. There is drought. In future, there is no water going to come on. So this drought is man-made drought. Tell me, natural drought, no rainfall. If no rainfall, natural drought. Understand? They are called socio-natural. Even landslide also. Landslide can be naturally land landslide, or if you know do deforestation, it will fall. So natural. You told me about natural disasters, right? What is your name? Exactly. You told me about natural disasters, no? Huh? You told me about anthropogenic also, no? Why you don't tell me about this one? Yeah, until next time, okay. So some disasters are mixed, not because of nature. Now, see, as I told you about Rajasthan agriculture, let me tell you a small point. The point is, 
agriculture, I mean crops, agriculture should be done based on the agro climatic conditions. What is the climate there? In that area, what is the climate? What is temperature? What is rainfall? In that area, what is the soil? How much water is there? Based on these conditions, you have to grow the crops. Actually, based on these conditions, even planning commission, before Niti Ayog, planning commission, divide entire India into how many agroclimatic zones? 15 agroclimatic zones. It's a very important point. Can I raise the board? See, for example, agro climatic zones. If you take India, enter India, the Himalayas, the Himalayas are divided into two agro climatic zones. One is Western Himalayan region. Other one is very good. Eastern Himalayan region. Three divisions of the agroclimatic zones. By the way, agroclimatic zones is based on four factors. Actually, agroclimatic zone means in a set means a zone, a zone wherein you study the availability of water, the availability of water, type of soil what type of soil is there what is the temperature there temperature is it 25 degrees average 35 degrees 45 degrees temperature precipitation means how much rainfall in that area rajasthan one type of rainfall kerala one type of rainfall how much rainfall based on these four factors you will call this as a agroclimatic zone that means in that area you have to grow one type of crops for which it is more suitable see farmers cannot grow every crop everywhere for certain jo in, in certain zone, one type of crop is beneficial, means more profitable, it will grow easily. You know, easily means environmental friendly, means if you grow that crop, nothing will happen to the soil, water, whatever, in a long term, sustainable development. So in that way, in every zone, you have, depending on these four conditions, you have to grow one type of crop. So as farmers are unable to divide themselves, the planning commission divided, entered into 15 zones. For example, Western Himalayan zone, Eastern Himalayan zone. Okay, Himalayan zone, Himalayan zone, Western Himalayan zone, Eastern Himalayan zone. Then the Ganga plateau, see, sorry, Ganga plain, not plateau, Ganga plain, Ganga plain, Ganges plains. Look at Ganges plains, divided into lower Ganges, means West Bengal, Jharkhand, lower Ganges plain, lower, middle Ganges plain, Bihar. Eastern UP, Bihar, Middle Ganges Plain. Then Upper Ganges, Upper, Upper means uh, Western UP, Upper Uttarakhand. This is Upper Ganges Plain. Trans, Trans Ganges Plain. Trans means the Punjab area, Punjab, Haryana. Punjab, Haryana is Ganga River, no Ganga River. Hmm. So it's called Trans, Trans Ganga Plain. Like there are four, four parts divided, entire plain area. Of course, if you generally if you take look at the plains, they divide the plains into this east coast. See, east coast is a plain now. If this is eastern Ghat, east of the eastern Ghat is east coast plain. East coast plain. If this is western Ghat, west of this is called west coast plain. Even Gujarat is a plain. Entire Gujarat is a plain. The other west, this is also plain only. Western part is plain. So the entire plains divided like these plains. Then all the plateau, this plateau region is there, no plateau region. The plateau region, the plateau and hills, plateau and hills region, they divide into west, east, center, south. South means western guards, eastern guards, they are south, south. Okay. Central means that Vindhya, Satpura, central. Plateau and hills, plateau and hills, divide into western plateau and hills, eastern plateau and hills, central plateau and hills, southern. 
means they are dividing India into different agro climatic zones. Final islands also, they even into islands, Lakshadweep, Andaman, Kovar islands. So how many zones are there? 15 I think, 15. 15 zones divided. Based on this you have to do the agriculture. Okay. I want to stop this topic. Move on to what is just management. Let us now look at to look at what is just management. Okay. Can I ask the board? See, actually, disaster management. Disaster management means disaster management. You should know. You are a management student, no? Yes. Disaster management means generally before disaster, what you have to do. During disaster, what you have to do. After disaster, what you have to do. All three are called as disaster. All over. So, disaster pre-disaster. Before, next is during disaster. During disaster, what will you do? Then post disaster, post. That means after disaster, what will you do? After disaster, what will you do? What will after disaster? You will see. First, before disaster, before the floods, before cyclone, before earthquake, what you have to do is you have to work on prevention or mitigation. Prevention or mitigation. Prevention means some disasters can be prevented. Example, if you can construct. Check dams. How is that? Check dams. Yeah. If you can construct check dams or some uh, some lot of dams, or if you construct the levy. Levy means, for example, this river, the river, or both sides of the river both sides of the river you build some tall walls so the river cannot come out if walls are not the river can easily flood when river rises water the water will flood if you build walls called levees levee water will not flood if you build levees dams okay do afforestation take a lot of measures floods will not occur example i told you, you know damodar river is a sorrow of bengal Damodar river is a sorrow of Bengal but now nowadays Damodar river is not flooding at all flooding completely stopped now Damodar river because of construction of lot of uh, levees dams and diverting the water through canals they are done a lot of things so finally prevented prevented this is called before disaster what you do before disaster you have to prevent it but some disaster cannot be prevented they can be mitigated mitigation means reducing the effect prevention means completely stopping mitigation means reducing the effect for example take cyclone can you stop cyclone by building a wall or by holding like this difficult right how can we can only mitigate cyclone mitigate means what a cyclone comes we can reduce the effect of cyclone how can you reduce the effect of cyclone by construct by mangrove plantation mangrove means see cyclones occur in the river or ocean generally mostly ocean right so this is the behavior of bengal cyclone is coming along the coast you have to go for mangrove plantation mangroves afforestation mangroves then they will stop some amount of cyclone some force will be stopped certain force cyclonic force similarly similarly see actually here prevention or mitigation of any disaster consists of two factors one is structural factor structural other is non structural factor means you want if you want to mitigate cyclone flood earthquake whatever or you want to prevent prevent cyclone uh, not cyclone cyclone drought flood whatever for prevent okay for prevention or mitigation of any disaster you can follow structural measures non structural measures structural means for example construction for example earthquake is there if you want to mitigate the earthquake what are the structural measures you construct the earthquake resistant structures earthquake resistant <coughs> structures or if you want to reduce the effect of the cyclone 
you construct cyclone shelter cyclone shelter when cyclone occurs everybody can go there and hide inside that cyclone shelter or if you want to reduce the effect of floods you construct the national highways all these things labo higher elevation so that they will not be flooded construction construction of roads construction of houses for example if you want to reduce effect of cyclone on, on your home you know what you have to do if your home is like this if your home is like this when cyclone comes your home will be like this only the upper part has gone gone with the wind have you read the book gone with the wind it's a very interesting read gone with the wind okay anyhow so cyclone will take away that that's why structural measure you have to do wind bracing you have to do wind bracing means you brace it like a bracelet you brace it tight tight tie the roof so that the roof cannot go there are all structural measures structural i told very few there are a lot more i'll come to it when i talk about each when i talk about each disaster separately i will come to each of them again okay structural measures means this kind of construction roads building structural measures okay non structural measures means how do you prevent or mitigate a disaster without means without talking of structures non structural measures example awareness awareness of people educating the people making strong laws strong policies government policies early warning system early warning system is also a kind of mitigation measure only no early warning before flood comes if you know flood is coming what will you do you will may you will either evacuate the place or will make some arrangements to reduce the effect no mitigation only no mitigation means what reducing the effect what is mitigation reducing the effect okay so such things are called non structural measures non structural even more are there i will come to it when i talk about each disaster i will specifically mention you what are structural me prevention <coughs> measures what are non structural if i do not tell you remind me i will tell about each disaster okay now so before any disaster before disaster occurs before it occurs what you have to do prevention measures mitigation also preparedness measures preparedness preparedness measures preparedness means you should be prepared for disaster people living along the tamil nadu coast should always prepared for cyclones or in also tsunami if tsunami comes what prepare be prepared if tsunami comes what you have to do prepare first aid search and rescue operations make is prepared okay prepare this measures so this is all this also comes as a pre disaster pre disaster okay now during disaster what will you do what will you do a disaster occurred what will you do yes during disaster first you will respond response respond when when a cyclone occurs how do you respond or when earthquake occurs how respond see respond means earthquake occurs <gasps> that is the response that response is different response means what will you do respond for example you will search and rescue search and rescue first aid first aid okay evacuation immediately you should know see when, when there is a cyclone or when there is a tsunami you should know how to evacuate you have to run to the uh, tallest building near you tallest for example you are here tsunami is coming tsunami is coming you have to go to the nearest tall building tall building you have to go so that tsunami will come all till here you can look at tsunami like this and you can laugh like this you understand so you should all you should already be ready you should know at the time you cannot think when tsunami comes oh cha tsunami is coming what is the new? you cannot ask like that beforehand you should know so this evacuation plan the um, uh, first aid should be beforehand okay then then what else is what is do do in disaster order do huh huh resettlement uh, rehabilitation yeah that is actually post disaster uh, actually relief 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 measures relief means uh, food they'll go on helicopter and they'll drop the food packets right it's important see now we are talking like actually disaster happens for two days no food will be there so you look for somebody for food you looking at the sky somebody will come helicopter they'll drop food packets you have to run behind the packets sometimes one packet when they drop here it will fall there because of 
because of you know physics right when a moving object leaves a packet they may leave on top of our head but where you have to collect it you have to collect it somewhere long distance they have to run to that place means you should know physics basically okay so relief measures relief see food uh, medical kits medicine kits some basic medicines medicine for fever antibiotic septic because during floods what happens is you will be hurt septic is septic happens so and so this is required okay tin sheets tin sheets so that you can put tin sheet and you can stay in the tin sheet safety okay all the things sanitary napkins everything is required very important during the disaster now post disaster of disaster what will you do you will go for Re very good rehabilitation rehabilitation means people who are displaced from the doing cyclone whose lives are affected whose houses are gone who lost their jobs they have to be moved to some other place or in the same place they should be given some uh, reconstruction houses order rehabilitation resettlement sometimes psychologically also during disaster some of our family members close relatives may die so counseling is required counseling trauma there will be trauma of disaster people will be sad trauma something would have happened to somebody in their family trauma counseling resettlement rehabilitation reconstruction you have to reconstruct everything again reconstruction houses are gone again new houses roads are gone again new roads drains are gone again new drains okay power cables are gone everything is gone so <coughs> post disaster you have to do all these things rehabilitation resettlement reconstruction if you want re 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 you add some more recovery <laughs> recovery rhyming rhyming rehabilitation also resettlement also recovery also okay anyhow broadly I, what I, what i what i'm telling is all these come under disaster management so disaster management means not only during disaster some of us think that disaster management means during disaster how do you manage okay during upsc means answer writing you will manage but before answer writing also you have to work a lot after after uh, you cannot do anything that is different so so during disaster pre post all three is together is called as so don't tell me what are the various components of disaster management tell me response relief first, first aid search and rescue then pre prevention plans mitigation plans early warning system early warning system okay reconstruction rehabilitation recovery rehabilitation international aid help all these things will fall under the under the what <coughs> that is very good that is called preparedness in prepare you are talking preparedness now i will tell that point bit see in preparedness what is telling is involving the local people actually what happens is preparedness means who should be prepared central government should be prepared state government should be prepared even the local people should be prepared because actually local people are called as first line of defense local people are called as first line of defense line line means line geta first line of defense when disaster occurs who will defend first central government state government or local people so they should be first equipped they should be trained capable equipped given training how can you train everybody in the village difficult no so whom will you collect i i gave a task to train the village people whom will you collect first initially children or very old people or youth youth right see because youth can learn quickly and youth are strong and they can help others very easily okay old people will not try to help others first they have to run away okay so local youth should be trained particularly by village level disaster management committees will be there <coughs> every village in every village they will make committee called village level panchayat level disaster management committees local committees there will be some volunteers they will come to volunteers sir i will help sir i will help volunteers those volunteers also will be there local youth first line second line of defense is state government central government third line of defense is international help for example when earthquake occurred in nepal during nepal earthquake 
14 December something the 15 Nepal earthquake India helped them India India even helped Nepal like that international help also we can expect but third line third line okay so anyhow so these are the uh, now these things if you arrange them in an order it will become a cycle that's called disaster management cycle I'll draw a cycle See, disaster management cycle means first there is an impact of disaster impact. You will draw like this. Name means impact. Impact. Earthquake, cyclone, whatever. First I occurred. Okay. After occurred, the first thing you do is response. First respond to it. Respond by first aid, search and rescue operations, whatever, relief, relief measures, whatever. After responding, after some, after, next step is recovery. And recover, recovery means rehabilitation, resettlement, reconstruction, recovery, recovery. Then development. Then you have to make the, you have to develop that area as a disaster resilient place, disaster resistant place. For example, in Vishakapatnam, Hudur cyclone which year? 14. 13 huh? 15 also 3 times total okay see when you do not know correct date write 2014 15 but don't 13 you do not 13 also then write 2013 14 but don't write like this it like it it like a date okay so you know 14 15 i think it's 14 only 15 only 13 not possible okay see you know 14 15 hudur cyclone when hudur cyclone occurred Nobody died actually. One person may have died with heart attack, but generally nobody died. But <coughs> Udur cyclone is a very strong cyclone. Very strong. Very, very, means, uh, the speed of cyclone is very high. The super cyclone of Orissa and, and, and also similar speed only. Both are equally speed, equally fast. But super cyclone killed many people. Many people died. But Udur cyclone, nobody died. Of course, lot of poles have bent, trees have gone, lot of things happened, but nobody died. Why, you know? Because of early warning system they already know cycle is going to occur and they are prepared people of Vishapattam are prepared for it everybody in their home nobody came out on that day okay and government has evacuated the entire coastal area when cyclone occurs the most affected people are coastal fishermen people and uh, government <coughs> evacuated them completely nobody is there on the coast cyclone came cyclone saw nobody is there it went back cyclone went back means it died after some time this is called as disaster I mean the preparedness, preparedness, okay. So what I am saying here is, development means, you have to develop any area such a way that next time when disaster occurs, it should not be affected, should not be affected. Example, Japan, I told you, Japan is developed in such a way, Japan previously, when now there is a earthquake, people used to die. But they developed the country such a way now, the structures do not, uh, structures do not fall down or collapse so easily, okay, so easily. Uh, for example, Vijayawada, when minor earthquake, no, scale of 4, 3.5, slight tremble, you know, I observe those kind of earthquakes, most in the night time you can observe. Why? Everything is silent now, you can observe. Okay? In Japan, it's very common, 4, 4.5. So if you go to Japan, work in a place, suddenly sometimes building will move. But it's common for you, you keep working. What can you do? You cannot go and stop the building, right? So it's a habit for them. They'll keep working. If it's moving large way, then they will stop and pause the system and then see what happens. Then they will respond. It became very common for them. Now, development. After that, mitigation. <coughs> mitigation or prevention. If possible, you prevent or at least mitigate. Okay? Uh, if there are grammar mistakes, Mandin Chardya Tapete, Shivan Chardya Okay? So, mitigation, when possible, prevention. Not possible, then mitigation. Then next one is preparedness. <coughs> preparedness. See, this is a cycle. So, this is a disaster cycle. First, impact disaster happens. Occurrence of disaster, first thing you respond. After that, 
next step is you, you recover from that disaster then you develop that area in such a way development means you take a state government health center government of in international health board or develop that area then you make the mitigation measures prevention measures then you go for the preparedness measures preparedness okay now i think i told about each of the step response means by first aid search and rescue relief measures supplying of tin sheets all these things are response recovery means rehabilitation resettlement these things development means reconstruction take inter financial help develop that area to make it disaster resilient then mitigation prevention means you prevent the disaster mitigate it by construction of dams check dams or you no know, awareness programs or policy law whatever preparedness means you train the people in that area so that they are prepared when disaster comes they can face it easily okay actually based on the preparedness there are two important concepts of disaster management you should understand one is risk one is vulnerability one is other thing is risk generally in the mains when they ask you any question on a flood landslide earthquake the question can be in any direction basically disaster management questions can be asked any way whatever way they ask the question you have draw this diagram but in diagram you mention if it is a earthquake related question you mention response how to respond for earthquake two three words recovery how do you respond for re how do you recover recover from the disaster how do you develop that area for cyclone development means uh, cyclone uh, for example the structures of that area cyclone area should be dam proof they should they should not be easily removed by wind they should be wind resistant water resistant development should be such a way okay mitigation right the measures right the measures you draw a cycle whatever question on disaster you draw disaster on cycle or strong but in the cycle you mention the specific things for that disaster every disaster same cycle only but response is different recovery is different prepared is different every cycle okay for example for preparedness for preparedness do you know how do you know what preparedness being prepared for cyclone means what do you know you make evacuation map evacuation map vulnerability map vulnerability map maps okay map means for example in the village there should be a map you should have clear map when there is a cyclone how how shall we evacuate for example this is a village this is a coast this is a village village okay there is a hill mountain here during disaster people's mind will not work they will run whatever directions if there is a mountain here if they start running here they cannot go anywhere they are going to come back so they should not go or there is a forest here with animals you should not go into the forest there is another disaster okay so you should know where to go to where to go for example sometimes what happens you know this is a low lying area very low lying area this one so when flood comes no flood water will come till here this is a high area see this is a high area high area water will come till here only here till here only now you are standing here uh, cyclone flood has come you will start running like this you will come here what will happen you understand so you should have a map evacuation map which direction can you go a village will have several communities a village means here one colony here one colony here one colony so every colony people should know how where they have run you cannot cycle on or start running you cannot do that you should have a clear plan a map okay similarly vulnerability map vulnerability means for example take a consider a school a large school is there a fire accident happened fire accident enter school the the school is going on fire okay then you should know what are the vulnerable pockets vulnerable places vulnerable means for example lkg class is more vulnerable 10th class class not vulnerable they can somehow jump and they can escape lkg people do the fire also fire fire go away they'll sing rhymes they don't know that's why what you have to do is see vulnerable places you have to first focus on that you have to evacuate them lkg or if there is any laboratory chemical laboratory is there during fire accident laboratory is the most dangerous place first place to evacuate laboratory only like that vulnerability map even the village also village at some place if old people are there or some children are there vulnerable places you should know what vulnerable places evacuate them that is called vulnerable map okay anyhow the point is not that the point is what is vulnerability what is risk 
these are slight different terms in disaster management these two terms are very important okay in any question they ask us management you are right about vulnerable assessment risk assessment you have just mentioned those words in a reasonable way okay for example let me see for example vulnerable vulnerability means susceptibility susceptibility risk means probability of damage risk means probability of threat probability of damage to property life economy environment the probability of damage is called risk vulnerable means susceptibility of the damage susceptibility i'll, I'll give you example see when there was buz earthquake buz which year buz 2001 in 2001 when there was buz earthquake in gujarat if this is buz earthquake earthquake okay the old city old city means hyderabad old new city delhi old new gujarat also buz also has a old city recent old city the old city of buz old city it has tall buildings see it's like this there are tall buildings narrow very narrow lines see tall building narrow lines so when during earthquake when buildings has what will happen yes. the susceptibility is more they are for example in buj in buj this is a old city the other village part buildings are not large small huts are there that too far away and the place is wide open free space is there population also very less population here here dense population tell me which which has more susceptibility of damage old city only because large buildings for example earthquake comes you are in the third floor of a building earthquake comes generally you have to come out of the building right come out of because in the building the beams the roof collapse on you you will come out you are in this building earthquake started like that you came out of the building came out of the road on the road both buildings will fall on you like this when you are a single building single building will fall on the road both buildings so escaping is difficult damage is more for example economic damage is very high large buildings you know more economic damage more life loss of life is more but here in the hut you can go out and play play for some time after it is over again come out to the house because a lot of space is there for a space no no problem in this place there is no damage to property less damage death of I means loss of life is very less so when you compare these two vulnerability is more for this place less for this place this is called vulnerable susceptibility for damage whereas risk is different risk means probability i'll tell you what for example in 2004 tsunami in 2004 tsunami do you know samir peta village samir peta okay then i can tell you anything see <laughs> samir peta is a village during 2004 tsunami all the villages in this area affected all villages because see all the villages have same type of houses same type of roads everything is same popular see here the both are different completely different here but here all villages are same all villages are similar ho- similar houses similar density of population all are equally susceptible for the tsunami when the tsunami comes all are equally affected but among all those villages there is one village called samir petai that village where is it here so that village the youth the people are very well trained very well trained for the tsunami if tsunami comes how to evacuate how to escape how to reduce the damage how to give first aid how to search and rescue they know all those things they are very well trained the village panchayat fortunately is a good panchayat due, due to good experience they are able to uh, train the youth in the village now when tsunami came now all the villages has huge loss of life but samirpet has very less damage 
Susceptibility is same, vulnerability is same. All villages are same distance from tsunami, same houses, everything is same. But then why in one village, one village the deaths are less? Why losses are less? Because they are very well prepared. This is called risk. So here the probability, the probability of samyar pettai of, of loss of life is less. Probability is less. Susceptibility of samyara pettai is same as the other villages. Vulnerability is same for all villages. But the risk is less in this village because they are very well trained. So you can write down that preparedness measures will reduce the probability, will reduce the risk. You can always reduce the risk. You can all reduce the risk. For example, all of you preparing for the exam. Let us say all of you are uh, writing the same exam, reading the same books. Okay? But some of you will be very well prepared to face the toughest paper. Sometimes unexpected will come paper. Unexpected. But some people will pass the exam. So for such kind of people who are preparing the direction, your risk of failing is very less. Probability of failing is very less. Risk is less. You understand? But vulnerability is same for all people. All you went to the same examination hall, same exam, everything same. So you understand different people risk? Did you understand difference? Huh? See, sometimes not only disaster man management, ethics also, ethics also, some concepts when you express susceptibility, risk, probability, damage, all things, nobody understands. You have to give example. Only when you give example, you will understand. Even you also do not know. You just learn something like this. With example only you will know. So that's why I try to mention examples in, in ethics, whatever. Examples actually give clarity to the examiner. Okay, the students know something. Otherwise, you will feel that you are just biharding and dumping everything. <coughs> Though you are not biharding, it appears like that. The examples <coughs> will make them think that you are not biharding. That's why I biharding examples. Okay. Now, see, uh, this is one important concept, vulnerable risk. Now, coming on to Coming on to, let us do one thing. Let us start with one disaster. Which disaster do you want to start with? Landslide, earthquake, or flood? Something interesting. See, basically, we have to discuss some 10 disasters. How to manage them? What are preparedness measures for them? How, what response for response for the disasters? Like that, we have to take few disasters and discuss them. Okay, but in the main, sometimes they will ask you certain disaster like you know heat wave. This day heat wave is uh, has become quite common because of climate change. How do you tackle it? Or what are the national disaster management authority? See, I still did not come to that. I'll come to it. I have discussed. Uh, all the institutional structures present in India and internationally to for disaster management. For disaster management, India specifically has some committees, some you know, organizations, some authority, procedures there. For example, NDMA, National Disaster Management Authority. NDMA is the highest authority for the disaster management. NDMA, NDMA has given guidelines for almost everything. When you are free, any you know, in the class at the time, you also can make a note, you can, you can download PDFs. NDMA guidelines for flood, NDMA guidelines for heat wave, for cold wave, for earthquake, for volcano. Means they give guidelines generally. Okay? So in the exam, sometimes they will not ask you directly, uh, suggest various measures to mitigate the landslides. They may not ask. They may ask, write down the NDMA guidelines to mitigate the landslides. At the time, some of you will get confused. Because you know, you yourself you know some measures, but you do not know what is given by NDMA. Then what will you do? You write your measures only and tell that it is given by NDMA. NDMA. Because NDMA will give the same measures only. NDMA will not give, NDMA will give your measures and even more measures. NDMA will give a big list of things. Everything will be covered in that one. That is the best way of writing an answer. Okay? But never bluff. It means right like this only okay now see NDMA guidelines anyhow the point that will okay now similarly disaster generally they are slow most of disasters slow onset very few are sudden occurrence disasters generally 
slow onset. They occur slowly. For example, cyclone is there. Of course, cyclone once it comes into the land, it's fast only. But you know, some three four days advance. Okay. Similarly, <coughs> drought is a drought. Drought, you understand? You understand slowly. Okay. Ten days no rainfall. Next ten days again no rainfall. Slowly it will become drought. Flood also. It start rain today. Slowly three four days continuous rain flood. So slow. It occurs slowly. Drought is very slow. Flood is little fast. Cyclone is maybe little faster. But some things like earthquake, you know, fast occurrence. Earthquake. or volcano or tsunami even sometimes floods because of landslides when there is a landslide when there is a landslide means along the slope this is a mountain or some slope along the slope rock debris earth loose soil falling down zzz, falling down is called landslide when they fall down near to that some rivers may be the rivers and if all this goes into the river river water will come up so if the flood occurs because of landslide sometimes flood occurs because of cloud burst cloud burst means generally rain comes from where cloud let us say this cloud has 1 uh, lakh liters of water all 1 lakh liters will not fall at the same time this 1 lakh liters will fall for 3 days today some 40000 liters tomorrow 40000 rain comes gradually you know but cloud burst means cloud burst All one lakh liters falling within four hours. Cloud burst. You understand what is cloud burst? The cloud is bursting. Entire cloud is falling at the same time. Means all the water in the cloud falling in less than three to four hours, rather than three to four days. In these kind of incidents, floods may be flash floods. Flash. Otherwise, flood is a slow occurring only. Slow. So disasters are slow onset or fast. Okay. Slow onset you can avoid them easily. fast difficulty avoid now let us take earthquake earthquake see first of all what is an earthquake how does it occur all these things you learn in geography okay but for the time being i'll just define it quickly quickly earthquake is nothing but see actually inside the earth at certain depth there may be some disturbance there may be some disturbance may because of breaking of rock breaking of rock okay or displacement of rocks disturbance will be there it will release energy it will release energy whenever there is any disturbance it will energy will release right right now this energy will be traveling to the surface of the earth in the form of p waves and s waves in doing geography learn that anyhow remember the mass seismic waves seismic waves see when there is a sound when there is a sound energy energy travels in the form of sound waves from the light energy travels in form of light waves like that when there is a disturbance inside the earth energy travels in the form of seismic waves so seismic waves energy will travel how traveling finally they will hit the surface of the earth surface of the earth okay when they hit the surface of the earth is it here in this shape in this shape don't disturb all those things okay when the surface of the earth the surface earth will vibrate vibrate the vibration is called as earthquake okay so earthquake is nothing but the vibration of the surface of the earth because of impact impact of the seismic waves generated deep inside the earth is called earthquake now it it occurs because of sudden release of energy okay now tell me what are the causes of earthquake causes for anything you are doing the same thing for floods or uh, landslides first topic is what is it flood, flood what is landslide whatever second is what are the causes third what are the consequences same thing for every disaster you study all these aspects it will finish your preparation okay so causes tell me where is causes of the earthquakes hmm yes plate tectonics plate tectonics 
on surface of earth plates are moving now actually the entire surface of the earth is made up of certain plates which you learn geography because of motion of the plates mostly colliding colliding plates and uh, you know transform plates earthquake one day earthquakes second thing is earthquakes may also other reason is deformation of rocks deformation of rocks inside the earth inside the some place see inside the earth there is a constant pressure now because of pressure some rocks will be deformed once they go beyond the elastic limit they may rebound for example you bending a rock bending a rock half some time the rock will rebound you understand what i'm talking about the rebounding rebounding rocks rebounding rocks these are the reasons for release of energy sometimes some people say that some studies some studies actually show that even human beings can cause earthquakes for example they say koina you know koina i heard koina earthquake in 1960s koina earthquake in maharashtra some say the study said that koina dam is there now because of koina dam earthquake occurred koina dam okay because of more pressure at certain because dam means you have to store a lot of water no because of uh, storing more water at a place because of high weight the rocks under that may rebound may may undergo deformation because of the earthquake may occur some point of time even three gorges dam you know three gorges dam in china when it was under, it was the largest dam in the world during construction many people said that this is earth if this is earth three gorges dam stores lot of water lot of weight is kept there so some people said that it may change the rotation of earth also the rotation of earth may be changed by few fractions of water seconds or whatever that is effect of koina um, three gorges dam three gorges so definitely it can cause earthquakes also so these are the man made cause of earthquakes one is dam dam construction some say some studies say that mining mining because of deep mining excavation quarrying earthquakes may occur deep mining quarrying excavating earthquakes may occur mining and of course volcanoes also may cause earthquakes volcanoes also may cause when is volcano earthquake may occur okay so these are the various causes of earthquakes both natural causes and anthropogenic causes of earthquakes okay however early warning for earthquake is difficult you can tell me 5 seconds in advance 10 seconds not more than that you cannot tell one day before tomorrow earthquake will come at 5 o'clock like that understand so early warning is difficult for earthquake that's why preparedness is difficult okay yeah actually koina i said that koina was a famous earthquake i mean infamous earthquake okay koina earthquake it's a village actually in maharashtra on one night earthquake occurred everybody died except one small kid he did not die maybe at the time somewhere he did not die everybody died so that's why uh, people know it very well koina earthquake now of the causes you study the just as yours okay what are the various consequence of the earthquakes one yes earthquakes can cause landslides you know that this is a mountain earthquake what will happen landslide earthquake can cause floods the earthquake the, the, the dam burst may occur or even the river water will come up earthquake will uh, cause great property damage because a lot of buildings complexes fall down no proper damage earthquakes will lead to fires the electric cables because earthquake electric cables may fall down may rupture fires may occur fires earthquakes can cause industrial accidents but tell let us say earthquake occurred in the nuclear power plant it's a major damage earthquake can cause uh, nuclear accidents industrial accidents chemical accidents earthquakes okay anything else loss of life in loss of life i have to say that earthquakes do not kill people poor structures do let's say like that okay i wrote very few but you can write more consequences you can search google whatever you can write more consequence of the 
of the earthquakes now now for anything any disaster the most important thing you have to remember learn is what are the mitigation measures or prevention measures mitigation or as i told you already mitigation measures you are divided into structural and non structural non structural measures see structural measures means structure wise for example you can use containment reinforcements saujanya what is containment reinforcements what is reinforcements for example if there is a building okay for maybe i have to draw like this if this is a building okay you go for reinforcement like this reinforcement like this reinforcement means steel no reinforcement steel in such a such a way that the steel contains the entire building the building will not fall reinforcement throughout the building containment reinforcement you see the image in the google you understand can not know how to go in room containment reinforcement you can understand then shear wall you build shear walls to transfer the load uniform transfer of load there should be uniform transfer of load this is a building enter building top roof should transfer load to the walls the wall transfer to the next roof then to the beams to the columns from the columns have to go to the foundation all the load has to come to the foundation finally and the foundation should be inside the earth nothing will happen in the entire building if there are any weak points weak point means a point where load is not transferred at some point load is not transferred there the building will collapse so entire load should be equally transferred transferred parallel through all the columns and beams to the foundation equal load transfer uniform load transfer okay also see you can use hollow concrete bricks hollow concrete bricks actually the earthquake earthquake the places where earthquake occur commonly if you observe they build with light wood light light material the building material should not be heavy heavy material can easily fall down light material can sustain the earthquake okay even falls on you damage not occur damage light light weight that's why hollow concrete bricks bricks concrete bricks inside hollow has seen hollow bricks with that you can construct the building hollow concrete bricks okay sometimes you can use in the structures you can use dampeners dampener dampener means dampener means see for example <coughs> if this is a very big building okay this building a lot of columns and beams uh, there in between you take a big rubber ball let the rubber big okay so that during earthquake all the energy will dissipate from here dissipate all energy dissipate It should show, see the building should not be rigid there should be some flexibility in the building moves at some place flexibility should be flexibility dampener is a dampener means in the building some places you have to put dampeners which are shock absorbers any earthquake they will take all, all the energy release the energy shock up dampeners okay or you can say have you heard of uh, base isolation method base isolation method the base isolation means if this is a land if this is a building building okay the base should have you can use lead you can use some lead balls large lead uh, cushions so that the building see the building is fixed to the earth if fixed to earth no when earth is moving building also will move like this but between the building and earth there is a gap gap means there is something there should be some um, lead balls when the base is moving like this the balls will not allow the building to move that much even the base is moving this much because of the ball the building moves slightly all the movement of the land should not come to the building in between something has to remove some movement for example when you are going in a car speed breaker 
the tire will move much but as much as tire move seeds will not move the movement should be absorbed by some shock absorbers and then only some of the movement should be transferred to the remaining part of the car understand this is called base isolation you isolate the base from the remaining part of building isolate means don't put the building in not like air like that there should be some lead lead uh, rigid rubbers whatever okay the one more concept where if this is a building building of five stories six stories the cellar the, the basement or the ground floor should have more walls mostly we leave the ground floor free for parking completely free leave free right you should not leave it free you have to use more columns more pillars you should not leave it for free if you leave it free this cannot take that much weight okay so you have to use more uh, uh, columns in the ground floor also i these are called structural structural uh, methods to mitigate the earthquake earthquake now let's go for non structural if you know you should know what are the standards is 9000 I just know where uh, they say that uh, the steel, the steel that you use, the yield should be 450 newton per millimeter square. The steel, the strength of the steel should be this much, this much, so that uh, it can resist the earthquakes easily. Minimum 415. Okay, the yield should be minimum 415 for the steel, according to the Indian standards. Actually, according to the what is that? BAS or BSI? BAS. What is BAS? Bureau of Indian Standards. It also gives certain certain standards of how building should be constructed in the in the high earthquake zone areas, medium earthquake zone. If you take entire India, if you want to divide the India map into earthquake zones, for example, if you take India, earthquake zones, divide the earthquake zones. Zone five. Zone five means. Highly earthquake prone. Zone five is here. See this one, this one, this. One. Entire northeast India is zone five. Zone five. Even Bujja also Buj. Zone five. Earthquake came now. This zone five. Okay. Zone five is highest. So when you are constructing buildings in zone five, you have to take very good care. Okay. Zone four is next level, below level. Zone four is around zone five. See, around this is zone four. This one is zone four. Koi na, because koi na earthquake came no zone four. Zone five and zone four are dangerous. You should be careful. Zone one means least no earthquake. Earthquake is very less there. Zone two slightly three means average. Zone four and five are dangerous. Okay. Actually, Delhi Delhi falls between zone four and zone zone three and four. Delhi. That's why Delhi has uh, Delhi is uh, we have Supreme Court, Parliament, all infrastructure no. So it's very dangerous. That's why Delhi all construction should be earthquake resilient resistance. Okay. Non-structural measures means non-structural mitigation measures means follow the Indian standards. Have a strong government policy. Government policy means government should have a clear policy that any building coming up in the zone four and zone five should have these uh, uh, construction methods. Otherwise, they should not permit the construction. If any real estate agent is constructing a building in Zone Four, he has to follow some standards, BIA standards. Otherwise, they should not be allowed to build. So, there should be strong policy, strong act, strong policy, strong act. And there should be, there should be awareness for, awareness for everybody, the contractors. Most contractors do not awareness. At Zone Four, Zone Three, if it is Zone Three, what we have to build? Zone, they do not know contractors. Even the government officials, there is not no government officials. Some officials may be transferred from Mumbai to uh, North East India. Let us say, whatever matters from Mumbai, same as will follow. Awareness, awareness is not there. Officials, even the financiers. Finance means, for example, I, I, I finance the construction. I finance it. When financing, I should know what is that place. When I am giving money in a construction. that construction does it um, meet the standards of the area zone earthquake zones i should know financiers okay even the residents the people the people for example when i am go staying in the zone 4 i am staying in koinaid maharashtra area 
when I take a building, I should know this building does not have reinforcement, does not have. For example, generally in the structural in the earthquake area, you have to use reinforced cement concrete rather than pre-stressed cement concrete. PCC, RCC, you know? Reinforced cement concrete, you have to prefer over pre-stressed cement concrete. Okay? So when you go to a building in the zone 4, you observe all these things, at least some of these things. Generally, in the earthquake areas, you know, if there are any old buildings, old buildings will be there, old government hospitals, old uh, schools will be there, you know. All those old things you now should be repaired. They should be retrofitted, retrofitted. We call it as retrofitting. Retrofitting of the old public buildings. Because public buildings, government hospital means a lot of people will be there, you know. Old hospitals. This is retrofitting. Means add the new things to the building, new this dampener, whatever, reinforcement, whatever, so that it will it resist, resist the earthquake. Like that, it will follow certain methods, measures, mitigation measures. Okay. Now, non structural means these things: awareness, policy, BS, land use, land planning, land use planning. Land use planning means you have to use the land based on which earth, which zone in earthquake it is. Land use planning. Okay. Even the municipality, the municipality should have awareness. Earthquake. Then people should know how to respond during the earthquake. We call it as preparedness. For example, in some schools that teach earthquake is there, you go. For example, there are some wrong, wrong, wrong ideas. Like during earthquake, you have to go under the bench. Some say like that. Under the bench may be dangerous sometimes. Other many people do not know the right things to do. In a school, children should know during earthquake what the what they should do. First of teachers should know what they should do. Then children will know. Like the general awareness of people how to respond during earthquake. Okay. Then financing, government investing in the infrastructure, whatever. So, non-structural measures, structural. they are the different ways of mitigating the earthquake. Prevention not possible. You mitigate the loss, that's all. This is also called as preparedness measures, preparedness, okay. Now, let us go to, let us go to, during the earthquake, what are the various, um, uh, how should respond, response, earthquake, response and recovery, recovery. Thing, same thing. Rescue, search, rescue, and search. For the Nepal earthquake, rescuing, and searching, they could not do. Indians were able to do it. rescue and searching, providing the first aid. There is response. Response, same response. First aid, evacuation. Understand? All these things come under the. How do you respond? Recovery, simple. Again, reconstruction, taking them to hospitals, giving them new livelihood, showing them jobs, trauma counseling. All these things are. Recovery. Then development. Development means you reconstruct the place. This time you, you use the you do you do the infrastructure using these standards. Whatever. Similarly, preparedness. Preparedness means same. Evacuation maps, maps, risk assessment maps, vulnerability maps. Understand? Preparedness. Training the local youth, village volunteers. So they are preparedness. Training the people of what to do when there is an earthquake. Same points. So preparedness, response, recovery, same points. Where there will be changes, causes, consequences and uh, mitigation measures. Here there will be changes. That's why we will be focusing on causes and mitigation measures. And preparedness, response, recovery, almost same for any disaster. Next disaster, which one do you want? Landslide? Landslide. Want to leave? Hmm, you see. <laughs> Temperature decrease. 23, 22, 21. No, sir, increase it. 29. Okay. Okay, now. See. Landslide. Basically, first of all, what is landslide? Landslide means nothing but nothing but 
the fall of the slope the fall the fall of rock rock debris earth earth means land soil okay fall of rock debris earth along the slope along the slope along the slope because of along the slope because of gravity land structures because of gravity gravitational pull okay of course landslide may be enhanced it can be increased by by heavy rainfall rainfall can increase it earthquake can increase it but naturally land structures because of the gravity only now landslide has landslide can classified as rock rock fall earth slide creep actually creep creep means landfall lands very slowly the land will slide after some it will take millions of years to come down for example i told you sometimes there is electric pole like this right after some 20 years the pole will be like this or 30 years that means what slowly land is sliding is called creep creep similarly slump slump means is land slide like this rotation rotation sliding slump okay similarly liquefaction liquefaction means the soil mixing with the water rain water or drainage or whatever and flowing flowing like mud mud flow we call it as mud flow the point is simple fall along the slope earth soil land rock fall and down see for example rock fall rock fall is different from rock slide rock slide means the rock will roll like this rock fall means for example the rock will fall directly just the change in the name rock fall rock slide mud flow debris flow debris slide earth flow liquefaction slump creep different names are there but everything is a landslide only landslide okay now what are the causes for landslide causes what are the causes for landslide cause anybody see again any causes anthropogenic and then natural so causes can be natural causes or anthropogenic causes natural causes means see landslide can occur because of geological reasons geological because of hydrological reasons whatever for example landslide occur because earthquake the earthquake land occur or because of volcano volcano land occur or you know geomorphological geomorphological reasons geomorphism for example because of a slope if the slope is steep see if it is like this no uh, less chance if like this more chance so because of the gradient the slope slope occur or because of weathering you know what is weathering if this is a, if this is a land if this is a area the rocks here rocks if they are undergo weathering weathering means uh, physical disintegration or chemical decomposition rocks becoming like powder whatever peels okay breaking into pieces because of uh, water uh, wind river rain whatever okay because of more weathering also landslide will increase okay hydrological means because of heavy rainfall even because of snow melt not only rainfall because of snow melt if on the on the, on the slope snow is melting runoff runoff like runoff surface runoff because of surface runoff also surface runoff also landslide will may increase increase okay even for example man made means deforestation yes very good because of deforestation when you remove the tree see actually trees hold the land very tightly if you remove the trees the land is slide easily you know or slope cutting why do you cut the slope for development construction you want to build a road on tirupati tirumala road how do you build the road by cutting the slope as slope is like this you cut the slope make a road you understand slope cutting or you know urbanization 
development of the area, construction of houses, water along the slope, construction of settlement along the slope, settlements along the slope, houses and all. Okay. Then, for example, what is it? Yeah. Mainly drainage channels. You know what happens? If this is a monoslope, underground if you build some pipeline, pipeline, if the pipeline is leaking, leaking a pipeline, that will actually from below it will destabilize the soil there, earth. It will become muddy, it will fall down. It will slide easily, landslide. Okay? That's why this pipeline should be constructed flexibly, flexible. It will bend the pipe, nothing should happen. It should not, it should not be rigid, it should be flexible. Okay? Drainage, then you know uh, what is? Yes, very good mining, mining, quarrying along the slope. We, we mine the hills generally, mining, quarrying. Have you seen the movie Varsha? First scene is mining scene only, mining. Okay. There is landslide, no? Varsha land, landslide, land is sliding. Or rock falls, rock slide is landslide only. Okay. Anyhow, so. We wrote very, very few, many reasons may be there. We can add more reasons later on. Okay, so there are the natural cause for landslide, man made cause for the landslide. Now, what are the consequences of landslide? What are the consequences of landslide? Consequences. See, because of land, what happens to landslide? This is the land. Because of slide of the land, I mean, because of sliding of rock, whatever. All the rocks or earth here will move. If there is a river here, river, it will all fall in the river. Because because the river will flood. So one of the consequences is flood. Landslides cause floods. Major floods. Landslides cause sudden floods, flash floods. Okay, and landslides cause great damage to the to the property. See, landslides cause damage to property not only on the slope. Generally, if you are here, your house is here. Because of landslide, your house will come here. But that is different. That is damage the property on the slope. But it will damage the property on the plain also. On the foot of the hill, the plain is there. No. Damage property there also. To damage property both both on the slope and in the foothill. Damage of lives. Okay. Then what else? What is the consequence of landslide? Tell me. Tell me. Not tell me. Damage to the uh, damage to the forest. Uh, flooding of rivers, property, life, economic activity, dam, burst of dams, whatever, everything will occur because of, because of landslide. If you think widely, you can tell many consequences, landslide, okay? But here we have to focus on, focus on, what are the mitigation measures? Huh? What? Salinity. In where? Where? In the river below the landslide, no? Third one. Oh, see. See now. Mitigation or prevention measures. How do you mitigate? Again, I told you anything, right? The structural, non structural. So, for mitigation measures, tell me what are the structural. How do you mitigate the landslide? See, if this is a slope, you can use piles. Piles. Because piles will go into the soil, they will keep the soil tightly. Also, retaining walls. Retaining walls means you construct the walls like this. If this is a slope, you construct the walls like this. So that they will retain the retain the soil earth. They will fall down. Okay? Retaining walls. Or you know, see excavation of excavation of head and buttressing of toe. Excavation of head and buttressing of toe see generally landslides occur because the head the higher elevation if very heavy 
let us say very heavy lot of uh, soil or rock is there it will fall down with gravity so it excavate that remove that one remove that one then nothing to fall but press the toe that means if the toe is very steep you add some matter to the toe you add some matter so that you can reduce the slope you see if you increase the if you, if you add something to the toe slope will reduce it. if you excavate even reduced not reduced but when you excavate the heavy weight should not be on the top of the hill it should be removed in the bottom buttress it so slope will be ready nothing nothing can fall down you understand similarly fencing of rocks fencing of rocks that means if you see there are this rock here a rock here a rock here around the major rocks you go for a fencing so rock will never fall down fencing will stop it fencing okay there is structural measure even afforestation you can call call it as structural structural afforestation afforestation means planting of trees along the slope so trees can hold the soil tightly they will not allow the soil to fall down afforestation okay for example if you are uh, building the pipeline pipeline or drainage channel use flexible pipes flexible pipes so that even if this underground movement is there the pipe will not break leakage will not happen it is it is said that most of the uh, lands occur because of leakage of the underground pipelines okay and whenever they build check dams build check dams build check dams to reduce the fast flow of the water water should not flow very fast if water flows very fast it will remove most of the matter it will weather it will cause erosion because the landslide will be increased so you have to stop the water where possible by constructing check dams check dams okay so anyhow these are very few methods of structural measures similarly what are the non structural measures what are the non structural methods to mitigate the landslide same land use planning land use planning means when you are when you are constructing on the slope you have to plan accordingly based on the slope for example if it is slope is very high you should not uh, construct the buildings or high rise towers or maybe means based on the slope you have to go for construction land use planning even the municipality should not give permission to construct on these steep slopes because if you are constructing on slope if you are affected is okay but along with you the down slope people people who are below they are affected because of your mistake they are affected understand to understand so drink and drive why why should not drink and drive you are affected is okay because you are drinking you can be affected is okay but left other people others are affected similarly if you develop the if you uh, allow the development along the slope in a irregular way it will affect the down slope people rivers will be affected down slope houses will be affected that's why you should not allow them so land use planning municipal municipal restrictions law there should be strong law or policy there should be awareness people should awareness aware should be there people same points awareness so tell me non structural what else non structural measures what should be done to reduce the to mitigate the landslides non structural ha huh? ha huh. avoiding the mining avoiding the mining avoiding the same points not opposite avoiding the mining avoiding the deforestation avoid deforestation what else you want to avoid do you know bench terracing do you know bench terracing or terrace farming terrace farming means if this is a slope if you want to agriculture here you don't do agriculture like this so many times like this you do here here you grow like this in china you can see in china along the slope they do agriculture by cutting the slope terraces terrace terrace also they will do terrace bending okay so that the slope will be stable slope will be stable if directly do agriculture slope will be unstable during irrigation during when supply water to this crop water will not stay here water will fall down as water falls down landslide chances will be increasing if it like this the water will stay there stay there water will percolate it will not freely flow so bench terracing is a method of agriculture along the slopes to avoid the landslides if you want to agriculture do like this okay 
you want to cut the slope for construction of roads you cut the slope scientifically you should study the slope everything you have to construct the road or Uttarakhand is there do you know Uttarakhand floods occurred because of irregular development along the slope Uttarakhand floods because irregular development slope only Uttarakhand you read about the case study of 2013 Uttarakhand floods how 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 development of Uttarakhand in unscientific way along the slopes led to Uttarakhand floods in 2013 okay same now if I ask you if landslide occurs what is the response what is the response first aid search and rescue evacuation same thing okay for example after landslide you give certain kind of cards to the people who are affected those people should get their families should get free education free health they should get some job somewhere let's say you are a you are a victim of tsunami all victims of tsunami should be given some employment the children should have free education in private schools whatever they should have free health facilities counseling trauma counseling should be there after the disaster they should be there before disaster that should be there after this, that like this. You see, you have the same points. Preparedness, response, same for every disaster. But these points are different. These points are even different. Okay, these points focus on them. I finish earthquakes and landslides regarding disaster management now. We will go to floods, droughts, cyclones, tsunamis later. Okay.